We have already seen this diagram in previous videos and it shows the relationship and the cooperation between all of the managers that make up an operating system. In this video we are going to be taking a closer look at the process manager. Before we carry on with this video, let's just reflect back on some work we did in a previous video. Here you can see I've got the computer's memory, and within the memory I've got code for application 1, code for application 2, and code for application 3. So we could have a spreadsheet, a database, and a web browser, for example. Now at any instance in time, one of these applications could have its code being fetch, decoded, and executed. And I'm representing that here with this uh, spinning arrow set. Now, of course, when we see one of these being fetch, decoded, and executed, we have to realize that they're referred to as a process, whereas the other two who are sitting in memory and not having their code fetched, decoded, and executed, we regard those as being a program. So this is just simply to show us the difference between what we mean by a process and what we mean by a program. The process manager decides on the allocation of the central processing unit. In other words, it makes a decision and it says, right, you are going to run next, and it will allow it to run for so many seconds or so many fractions of a second. Second. But there'll be other things that will also dictate how long an individual process will have access to the central processing unit time. The process manager also keeps track of the status of each process. Now what this means is that an individual process will go through a number of states. One of the states would be it's waiting. It's waiting to be given access to the central processing unit. So it's not actually having its machine code fetched, decoded and executed. When it is having its code fetched, decoded and executed, then it is said to be in a running state but during the running state a circumstance could arrive where it is expecting to get at some data which is on a disk now of course it takes time to get information from the disk because the disk has to spin to position and so on now in our time frame that's very quick in a computing's time frame if it was uh, expected to wait until the disk had spun to the right position then brought the data in from the disk that's an eternity because the central processing unit could have executed millions and millions of instructions in that brief period of time. So what will happen in these circumstances, the running state will be changed to a different state, a waiting state where it will say well I'll come back to running a little bit later because I'll let something else run in the meantime while I'm waiting for my data to be accessed from the disk. So another important task of the process manager, it monitors whether the CPU is executing a process or waiting to execute. And clearly one of the roles of the process manager is to ensure that the CPU is executing as frequently as possible. So it doesn't want to be in a state where it's waiting for a process to start executing. So it has to ensure an efficiency of switching between processes because we'll always have a circumstance where a process is executing and it might need to wait for a disk to spin to position for example. So the process manager has this responsibility to ensure that the CPU is used efficiently, that we don't have effectively, for want of a better word, a down time for the central processing unit doing its fetch decode execute cycles for whatever process is currently executing. The process manager handles transitions from one state of execution to another. So in other words, the controlling part of the operating system with respect to who gets the central processing unit is controlled by this particular manager. So it will say, right, well, you're waiting, but you can now execute. You have to go to a waiting state. So the process manager has this responsibility. So the process manager allocates the processor and sets up the necessary registers and tables. Now, these registers and tables are essentially a data structure and the type of thing they're responsible for containing are the status of a particular process so it'll have some kind of flag mechanism whereby it'll set an area of um, a table to a one if a process is running it'll set it to a zero if it's in a waiting state so there'll be some codes in there that will indicate what state an individual processor is actually in when the process is finished or the maximum amount of time that that process was allowed access to the central processing unit has expired the process manager claims the processor. Now it does this because it obviously wishes another process to have access to the CPU so its machine code can be fetched, decoded and executed. So in other words, like all managers, the process manager is looking after its own resources and of course the resource we're talking about here is the resource of the central processing runtime. If we reflect for a moment on a computer program and we'll say Word, because remember Word is really nothing more than a computer program, I'm representing it with this blue shaded 
needed area here conceptually. Of course a computer program is split up into a number of sub programs. So for example as you're looking at this here the yellow one could be the sub program for the spell checker. The orange one could be the sub program for printing a particular document. So we know that all programs are really made up of a, a tiny sub programs and depending on the paradigm you're working in these sub programs could be called methods if it's object orientated. If it's a kind of a traditional language they could be called functions and so on. But what we really have we have a program and we know that they're decomposed into all of these smaller sub programs which obviously all work together and cooperate to perform the task of whatever the particular program is. Now for historical reasons when we talk about Word or an, any other application and we're representing it here as a computer program made of all of these sub programs they're often referred to as a job. Now this is because when you used to have a computer program it used to be on cards you used to put them in a box and you would wander off and you would hand them over to somebody who would put them in a card reader and you would refer to that as your job and of course the card reader individual would have lots of people taking them little boxes containing cards and every one of those were the jobs of those particular people so it's frequently referred to as a job when you see this program here so a program consists of many sub programs and the whole thing is frequently referred to as individual jobs so this would be a job say for a word processor you'd have another job for a spreadsheet and so on so the word job and program can kind of be used interchangeably and when you study operating systems there's all these different words and they tend to get used out of context sometimes but I wouldn't get too hung up on that they really were talking about here as a complete entity something that we want the operating system to do for us and here we've referred to them as programs but of course they are historically often referred to as a job now for argument's sake we're going to say that this particular job this particular program can be fitted into the computer's memory because it's not a very large program so here we can see a schematic diagram of the computer's memory so what we're really saying is all of the program can fit into the memory as I've represented by this blue shaded area here of course in reality I've shown this as a blue shaded area but of course it's made up of all of the sub programs so if we look to the memory schematic for a moment we can see that what we can do we can show it all color coded here so we can see that the yellow sub program is here in the memory the red sub program is here in the memory and we can see it's not quite as big a sub program as the yellow one because it's not taking up as much space and we can see how the colors that are appear in the job i.e. the program are actually stored in the computer's memory of course from the memory managed point of view the way in which i'm showing how this particular job has been stored is a little bit simplified but we'll not worry about that because we're concentrating here on the uh, process manager and what we can see that in any particular point of time with this particular job a sub program will actually be executing and i'm showing here that the sub program the yellow sub program is executing by those rotating arrows now of course what that means is the memory is having its machine code in this particular area that represents that sub program fetch decoded and executed and you can see I'm doing that with another set of arrows going round in a circle now that is being fetch decoded and executed so we can say that this area of the computer's memory is now the process it's part of the job and this is one of the processes being executed as part of this particular job now, of course at a later point of time what we can see happening is the orange sub program will start to execute because that's required to carry out whatever the task is for the overall job and of course it will then have its machine code fetch decoded and executed so this now becomes the process that's being fetch decoded and executed so overall we have the job but at any instance in time we have the individual processes executing and of course it's these individual processes which kind of stem from the sub programs if you like they're the executing sub programs which is what we mean by a process the fetching and the decoding using of the central processing unit so we can see an overall job is actually made out of a number of smaller processes having considered what a job is and the individual processes that make up that job the next video is going to concentrate on an individual process and look at how it changes its state during the execution that takes place in all computers that have operating systems check out the supporting website associated with these videos and also consider subscribing to my youtube channel and you'll get an automatic update every time i upload a new video you could also follow the work i'm producing by subscribing to my google plus circle